morning, everybody. <clears throat> Great to see everybody this morning. Just a couple of highlights from the bulletin. Uh, one, please note there is a correction to the bulletin in the mass schedule. Monday, November 11th is Veterans Day, and as we do for all of the civil holidays, mass will be at 9 a.m., not 8 a.m. So it does say 8 a.m. in the bulletin, uh, but again, mass will be at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. I want to congratulate all of our festival raffle winners. Uh, Newsflash, if you didn't get a phone call, you didn't win, but if you'd like to know who did, you can check the bulletin and see who won the various raffles from the festival. And while we're on the subject of the festival, we certainly want to thank everybody who helped make our, success, our festival another great success. Whether you helped out, you donated items, or just showed up and had a good time, uh, we certainly appreciate everyone that came out and supported and helped make our festival successful. And we want to extend that thank you, too, to everyone who worked so hard in our recent garage sale, our parish garage sale. A lot of that work was behind the scenes. You didn't see it, but a lot of people put in some long hours on that garage sale, moving a lot of heavy objects and furniture. And uh, so we want to thank everybody that helped out with that, too. And on the subject of the garage sale, we do still have tables and chairs available. So if you would like to purchase some tables or chairs, these are folding chairs and folding tables. Uh, they're still in good condition. They're not in great condition. I mean, they've experienced years of service in the church and in the school, uh, but they are still very usable. So if you're not concerned about how they look, just how they function, uh, there are some very nice tables and chairs still available. Just contact the parish office. Next Sunday is Coffee and Donuts Sunday. I invite everyone to stop downstairs for coffee and donuts and help support our parish food pantry. It's also... Uh, being in the month of November, our special turkey coffee and donut Sunday, asking people to please bring a frozen turkey with you next weekend uh, to donate to the food pantry. They will be distributed at the Thanksgiving distribution on November 23rd. Correction for the Knights of Columbus. The, it had said in the bulletin that the Knights of Columbus were having a pancake breakfast this morning. That is not the case. Uh, there will be no pancake breakfast this morning here at St. Boniface, so... If you want pancakes for breakfast, you'll have to go somewhere else. But uh, again, there is no Knights of Columbus pancake breakfast today. Please stay tuned for more information about future pancake breakfasts. The St. Boniface Brew Club is having its next brew day, Saturday, November 16th, following the 8 a.m. mass in the cafeteria kitchen. Many people enjoyed the most recent products from our brew club at the festival, and so they'll be making some more brews Again, next Saturday, November 16th, following the 8 o'clock Mass in the cafeteria kitchen. And that is for anyone who's interested in learning about brewing, who just enjoys beer, or maybe just like having a good time. I invite you to come and be part of our parish brew club. As I mentioned in my pastor's column a number of weeks ago, uh, we are transitioning now out of the year of prayer here at St. Boniface to the year of discipleship. And you'll be reading and hearing more about that in the coming weeks. It will officially launch in the Advent season, which is coming up in December. Uh, but you can read about it in our in insert in the bulletin today. Part There will be a number of activities with that, but part of that will be an adult faith formation series on discipleship. Again, you can read about that. Hopefully, you'll be able to participate in that project in other activities throughout the year of discipleship. <clears throat> on a personal note, I certainly want to thank everyone for your care and concern for me over the past week and a half or so as I've been recovering from bronchitis. I must have had half a dozen packages of soup that showed up at my door like it was Santa Claus stopping by just giving me gifts and presents. People handing me boxes of tea. People even on the way out of church reaching into their purses and handing me cough drops and other things that they happen to have in their purse. So thank you so much for your care and concern for me. I am so spoiled here at St. Boniface, but I am on the mend. I believe I'm past the contagious stage, and it's just trying to get my voice back now. Uh, so thank you again. But this is also an opportunity for us to really start thinking seriously about the future, the future of ministry here at our parish. I mean, I came to Mass last weekend, and you couldn't hear me. I was here. You couldn't hear me because there was nobody else. If I didn't show up, there would have been no Mass. So what would you have done? Where would you have gone? Those are the kinds of questions we need to think about because the day might happen when I am too sick to come to Mass. God forbid I get hit by a bus or something. You know, what, what's going to happen? What will you do that weekend? Because there's nobody else. 
There's nobody waiting on deck. I mean, Father Kaz even was with us, right? And he's not here now because he, of his health. So we just don't have the guys to fill in anymore like we used to. So we really need to start thinking seriously, not next year, not next week, now, about what we're going to do as a parish in the event that something like that happens. So just think about it, pray about it, and we'll be talking more about that as we move forward together. But again, thank you to everybody who reached out in care and concern for me in my illness, and I am on the mend. So now um, I do want to introduce a new member of our pastoral team today. Um, part of the formation program for the permanent diaconate. These are men who are studying to be permanent deacons like Deacon Tim here at our parish. And he actually is a part of that formation program. He's on the formation team. But part of their formation is that they are assigned to a parish other than their own parish. And they get pastoral experience by participating in different activities and different ministries, just seeing how other parishes do things. And so we have with us, we're blessed to have here in our parish, the opportunity to have someone who's in deacon formation to, who has been assigned to our parish to experience ministry here at St. Boniface. So I know you welcome him as you welcome all of our visitors and guests here. Uh, but I'd like to introduce uh, Dave uh, Jackwell, and he will come up now and introduce himself. So please welcome Dave Jackwell. So Father said, keep it brief, I will. Um, so I've already experienced a warm welcome here. I've been able to participate in a few different things, including last weekend's Fall Fest, the Fall Festival, um, Holy Hour, and Pastoral Council. It's, it's been really good. As part of our formation, I'm in the fourth year of formation to become a permanent deacon. And we actually have some of our instructors, uh, Deacon Tim and Mary uh, from your parish, have been some of our instructors. My wife, Peg, and I, she's sitting there with me. Um, We've been, all of our 37 years of marriage, we've been in Greenfield Township. Our kids graduated from Seneca about 10, a little more than 10 years ago. Um, she's very active still in the cross country, and she's known affectionately as the Bell Lady um, out at Seneca High School. So I'm looking forward to this scholastic year and doing different participation here uh, and helping out in whenever way I can at St. Boniface. Thank you again for the warm welcome. Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon found on page 231 in the Breaking Bread, page 231. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry for help, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Amen. mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, who intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You will honor the Lord. You will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve, to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will rise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when they told him to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke to these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. My steps have been steadfast in your paths. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But in justice I shall behold your fate. On walking I shall be content in your presence. Lord. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you, you are doing, and you will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels. And they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I was reading that Gospel passage and that parable, a couple thoughts came to mind. The first one was obviously at the time of Jesus, they didn't have HLN or IDTV or forensic file shows because this would have been like a week-long special in those programs. What's going on with this lady and her husbands that keep dying? But then secondly, I thought, you know, if I'm about the third or fourth brother in the line here, I'm going to start looking for some legal loopholes here to try to get out of this deal. <laughs> this is really suspicious. But of course, that's not what the story's about. The story in the parable today is a challenge that Jesus challenges the Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection. They do not believe in the life that is to come. And they try to make this argument against it by looking at marriage. And in their mind, if this, this life after death exists, it's basically just an extension of this life. It's a continuation and extension of this life and the values of this life and the things that we think are important now. That's what they think heaven is. And so they think that that life exists to further the goals and the values of this world. And that's where Jesus contradicts them. He says, you got it all wrong. It's the other way around. That this life and everything in it exists to further and bring about the kingdom of God. That's what it's about, including marriage. Marriage exists to prepare the way for and build up the kingdom of God, the world that is to come. Married people here today, did you think about that? Think about that when you said I do at the altar, that you were taking on a divine commission to be witnesses of the kingdom that is to come, to work to bring that kingdom about by the way you love one another, by the way you love your children and your grandchildren and by the witness that you give to the community, that you live your lives together for the life that is to come. The life that is to come doesn't exist to further our values. We exist to prepare the way for the kingdom and to live our lives according to that. I'm going to let you in on a little hint here. You all know what my other job is, right? I work at the marriage tribunal office, and people often ask me, well, what do you do at the marriage tribunal office? We do marriage annulments. We meet people when their marriages have failed. And while there's different reasons for different marriages failing, there's a common thread that runs through most of them. And that is that people didn't marry for the life that is to come. They married for this life. They thought that the person they were marrying was going to make them happy, fulfill all their needs, be the person of their dreams. And guess what? The first day you wake up next to that person and they're snoring, 
and they've got the goo coming out of their eyes, and they lead the toilet seat up, they're not the Prince Charming or the Princess Charming you thought they were. They're not going to meet all your needs. Guess what? No one is. Because no one is perfect this side of the grave. So we don't need, don't marry trying to find your peace and happiness in the other person. But together, side by side, living as one for the kingdom that is to come, you can find that peace and that joy and the happiness you're looking for. That's your divine calling, your divine commission, to live together as a family for the life that is to come and to be that witness in our world today. So just invite the married people of our community today to think and pray about that. And we need that witness now more than ever. We've got all these marriage wars going on, right? Trying to understand what marriage is. We need people to step forward and be those faithful witnesses of the dignity, the sanctity, and the beauty of marriage. I can't do that. I'm a celibate priest. But you can and are called to do that as married people. So think about it. Pray about it. Live your lives to the kingdom that is to come and offer that witness in our world today. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that we may offer faithful witnesses to God's abiding care for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials that they may look beyond personal disagreements and work together, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced torture and abuse, that God will free them from all fear and hatred, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not believe in eternal life, that they may come to know the living God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all veterans, that they may be healed of trauma and painful memories, and be blessed with health and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this math, for Kathy Zapolsky, and for all who have died, that God will lead them to the peace of eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We keep in prayer in a special way throughout the month of November all those named in our book of remembrance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way for the invitation to come to your kingdom. We ask you to help us live our lives in whatever state we are called for the coming of that kingdom, all through Christ our Lord.
you, Commander Slavis. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Hey, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.